Jane's Fighters Anthology. Overcoming design problems with modern hardware. Introduction. Jane's Fighters Anthology is a wonderful flight simulator written in the days of the classics or the genre. It has many strengths, but it also has a few very significant flaws. The most important and compelling flaws are, one, the keyboard commands are confusing, poorly organized, and not changeable. Two, a bug in the network code prevents its use on IP networks outside of a NAT LAN. And three, it demands 640 by 480 video resolution, and it won't work without it. It is possible to overcome these three problems. Let's take them one at a time in reverse order. Problem three of three, that's the 640 by 40 display requirement. If your display, if your display supports the old classic 640 by 480 resolution mode and four to three aspect ratio, you won't have this problem. However, many modern LCD display panels have discarded the classic four to three aspect ratio and report to operating system display software that they can't directly display full screen 640x480 images. The best way to overcome this problem is to buy an old used LCD display that conforms to the old 4 to 3 aspect ratio, not one of the new widescreen models. These are now readily available in pawn shops and secondhand stores and generally are not very expensive. I bought one in 2014 for just $8 that works well. This will even work with laptop computers by forcing use of the external monitor. Problem two of three, that's IP network play is limited to LAN architecture when NAT is used. Obviously you can solve this problem if you limit yourself to solo or LAN play. Alternatively, it should be possible to write network intercept software that will run on a different computer on a client LAN and forward all traffic to a remote server. But that software has not yet been written by anybody. JFA uses only port 1791, both UDP and TCP, for all network traffic. We could call this new software FA Multiplexer, and the computer hosting it would then be called the FA Multiplexer host. Then JFA clients could designate the 192.168.x.x style LAN address of that FA Multiplexer host as if it were the host IP address for the multiplexer session for the multiplayer session. The FA multiplexer would be like a man in the middle, appearing to the client like a local FA hoster, and to the remote GFA server as if it were a client. Finally, problem one of three, that complex, confusing, hard-coded keyboard command structure. It turns out that for the vast majority of simulated aircraft and missions, only 35 keyboard commands are needed. Ten of these are already well organized on a standard numeric keypad, as shown in this image, and 16 of the remainder can be mapped to obvious or convenient buttons on modern joysticks like the well-known economical Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. Here's an image of that. However, all others must either be memorized and used, however awkward that may be on a standard QWERTY keyboard, or else they must be programmed into a programmable keyboard emulation device. Here is my list of the 35 fun fundamental commands, along with my recommendation as to how to access each of them if no programmable keyboard is available. And as you can see, the first group, uh, at least 10 of them, can be put on your numeric keypad. And then the next group, about 16 others, can be put on your joystick. And the final group, it's a small group, has to be memorized or put on a programmable keyboard or something. Minor variations from the above list will be necessary if you use different hardware or different software from what I use, but this is the basic idea. We should talk about a few other helpful tools. When using Microsoft Windows, you can best customize your Logitech Wingman Extreme joystick using Logitech's Windows-based profiler, as described in this image. This maps all of the commands you're likely to need to convenient locations on your numeric, keyboard and, numeric keypad and joystick except for the last nine in the above list, numbered 27 through 35. All of these are simple, unshifted commands, and most map alphabetically with their associated function in an intuitive manner. The most powerful keyboard mapping. For the most powerful known setup, you can purchase a programmable Cherry point-of-sale keyboard and program all of the keys as described in, the Im in this image. 
Here is a link to my online review of that programmable keyboard with associated video clips. In that case, I recommend you also program the joystick as described in the ima image here. Using either Logitech's Profiler or QJoyPad, and either tool can work, because none of those commands are shifted. Whether you fly solo, on your own land, or figure out a way to do this across the internet with friends, and no matter how you arrange your controls, I hope you enjoy this wonderful old classic flight simulator as much as I do. It runs well on modern hardware. We are still working to make Jane's Fighters Anthology even better. Please join us in the gaming flight simulation area at askmrwizard.com for further details and to keep up with our changes and to see what we do with other flight simulators. Thank you. We appreciate your support.